Hi everyone and welcome back to Nusantara Folk Tales with me. And this week I wanted to tell you a story that was uh, collected by a popular Malay cultural figure and scholar, Zakaria Hitam. Um, I've got his book here actually. It's called Folk Tales of Malaysia. And the story is called Ikan Jantan, which means male fish. It's not like your usual Malaysian folktale because you have this Shakespearean plot with cross-dressing lovers, you have a mystery, you have deception, adultery and a very satisfying uh, ending. So uh, the original story is called Ikan Jantan but when I adapted it in my book Nusantara Sea of Tales, I renamed it The Tale of Princess Kamaria and the Male Fishes. Chapter 48, if you're interested. So I'm going to half read, half tell you the story. Enjoy. Princess Kamaria was in her private garden one day when she happened to come upon gardener Yusuf. When the gardener saw the princess, the world seemed to stop. When the princess looked at the gardener, she thought her heart might just burst from her chest. As one can imagine, this was an impossible situation because... Princess Kamaria was a member of the royal family and was already married to Raja Adnan, and Yusuf was, well, he was just a gardener, albeit a handsome one. The gardener knew his place and tried to forget about the princess, but she could not do the same. She became obsessed with the gardener and began to think up ways in which they could be together. One day, the princess came up with a cunning plan. She told Yusuf that she could not possibly marry him, for he was but a mere gardener, but there was a way for them to be together. She ordered the gardener to disguise himself as a woman and seek work as her handmaiden. You might get caught and be killed, for no man is allowed in my quarters. However, you must do this for me, she said. Donning a dress and covering his head with a veil, Yusuf transformed into Kalsum <laughs> and obtained the position of handmaiden to Princess Kamaria. From that moment on, the princess and the gardener spent every waking moment together, not to mention the nights. The two were deeply in love and the, because the princess was so entranced by the gardener, she did not pay any attention to her own husband, who also loved her. One day, her husband Raja Adnan decided to send his wife a gift of two fine chickens, but failed to notice that one of the animals was a rooster. Princess Kamaria promptly returned the rooster, offended that the sultan would send a male animal to live in her private quarters. Naturally, the sultan was filled with great admiration for his wife's sense of modesty and purity of heart. He decided to send her another gift, this time of two beautiful goldfish. Once again, one of the goldfish was returned to the sultan with a curt message. If I do not allow a rooster to reside in my residence, what would make you think I would allow this male fish to stay here? The sultan was astounded and wondered how his wife could tell the difference between a male and female fish. Puzzled, the sultan asked his royal advisor Johari to investigate. The royal advisor searched through all the books and scriptures, spoke to the fishermen and gardeners and travelled the country, but alas, he found no answer to the sultan's question. One day, as he returned from another useless trip, his wife, Siti Zabeda, noticed his low spirits and asked if she could help. Johari told his wife what had happened. Siti Zabeda immediately suspected that something was amiss. Husband, there is a way to tell the difference between a man and a woman, and that is by their physique and their mind. Men are usually stronger in their bodies, although women can be stronger in their minds. Why not hold a competition to find the most athletic and cleverest man and woman in the kingdom? How would that help? asked Johari. It might reveal the secret between men and women. Feeling desperate, Johari advised the sultan to hold a competition for both the men and women of the kingdom. On the day of the competition, the men were lined up on one side of the field and the women on the other. 
Throughout the day, events were held to see who could run the fastest and longest, who could throw the furthest, and also who could solve the trickiest problems. Siti Zabida sat next to her husband and watched the princess like a hawk. She noticed that the princess had her eyes on her pretty handmaiden, Kalsum. The princess was not at all interested in watching the men compete, but instead clapped and cheered as Kalsum won each and every race. Siti Zabira could not help but observe that the handmaiden was exceptionally tall and quite physically gifted. Husband, I believe I know the answer to the Sultan's question, whispered Siti Zabira. She explained that the princess only pretended to be able to identify the male fish in order to show the purity of her character. But in actual fact, her lover had been living in her quarters all this while. When all was revealed, the sultan had Princess Kamaria and the unfortunate gardener Yusuf sealed in a barrel and thrown out to sea. And that was the end of that. The end.